We're good to go. Welcome everybody. Week number four. Get my screen shared here with everyone and check out our, our great presentation. So uh, there's Ralph be waving to everybody. So hello, welcome, hola, shalom, all those good things there. Clint, start your recording if you haven't yet. Um, before we get going, any questions, concerns, comments, fears, anything from anybody that you have um, this last week or with the project or anything happening in life that you want to tell us about? This is Colette. I had a hard time embedding my web that I was trying to do my presentation with, so maybe sometime you can explain that to me. Embedding into where? Embedding it. It was a video from Nelson. Oh. Embedding it into okay. the presentation. I couldn't make it, so I could click on it and bring it up. Make it work. Okay. Yeah. Well, in Google Slides. Um, no, I was in. Um, I think Adobe Sparks or something. No, no, no. We did Prezi. We were in Prezi. Hmm. Uh, look for those videos on YouTube. They're there. And normally you can pull them in easily to anywhere, especially Google Slides. Yeah. So it can only be a YouTube video on Google Slides. But um, yeah, they're on YouTube out there. You can find them and put them in. Yeah I, yeah, I can come sit down with you sometime and we can go through it also. Can't find it, so keep me posted on that one. Okay, thanks. You're, you're, you're welcome. Any other concerns or questions? Well, excellent. Well, we will jump in with the element presentations. This is what we want to spend our time on mainly during these these Thursday afternoon meetings and then answer any questions that you have. So we'll just jump right in with uh, element number nine, Rachel, Kathy, and Sharon. I know you're uh, anxiously waiting to do this. So whenever you're ready, go ahead and you can. Okay, am I on? Yeah, you're on. Okay, we're talking about. Um, Share your screen. Okay. It's just Rachel and I. Show your screen, oh. please. Oh. How do I do it? How do we go? Okay. One moment. Quick, I'm in quick start. And Brandon may need to stop sharing first. Oh. Oh, but yeah. Let me. I'll just go as ahead. As soon as you start, so get shared. Get shared. I'm stopped. Okay. All right. We're talking about chunking. Um, doing it in small chunks. I don't know how many of you have been to a a uh, conference or something and you feel like, whoa, too much information, but if you do it in chunks and you take your notes in chunks, it makes it a lot easier. And they talked about uh, de declarative knowledge, and that's best chunked together with things that are logical, that makes the fit together, that logically fit together. And then there's procedural knowledge, which uh, contain a series of, uh, it's a process, so you put it in steps. I look at that as scaffolding. And when I first started reading what we needed to be talking about today, the first thing I thought of is our Wonders program. So I wanted to share everybody share this with everybody because it's all in chunks. It's all here and we can move it around so it makes sense if we if we want to move it uh, sorry, where this will fit better with that story mm. and we can move it there. And that goes with our small groups. So here's our small group. It's all right there. We can move it around however it makes sense. And they're done in chunks that way. On level, beyond level, English language learner, and then whole group language arts. And this is where I sometimes move this kind of stuff up to here because I want to put it, I want to put it with a story. And I want it by the story where they get they get to see the examples, so they can see it in writing. And then along with all of these, 
chunks here. There's even smaller chunks in here along with graphic organizers. And one of the things I really liked for this week was, where did it go? Was this one. I think, nope, sorry. Sorry, sorry. I'm clicking the wrong one. Was this one. And it had, this is how we started it out. So I caught their attention with this picture. We talked about it. Why he's got two, why does he have that in his mouth? And then they have a video on it. And they can Overcoming watch, challenges. Oh, sorry, I'm not going to play how it. To where, a video on it where they can, where they can see that. And so it, it breaks it up into different things. And now I can't click out of that because this window is in my way. How do I exit out of that part? Okay, but I can't slide it enough. Okay, can you just go. click the X? There we go. Yeah. But it was covered by a picture. Okay, so I really I really like this lesson and what we and what we talked about with chunky because the students do better when things change and it's put together in a in a way that it's got gets their attention and grasps their their interest and we have a lot to go through here with this but this is what I go through every week to find out what I want what I don't want and I like it because it does do a lot of that chunk uh, the chunky doing it in small chunks just like our article said just like that that said all right okay, okay and then Part of it is using your technology to help chunk new things um, that if you can give them in more multiple senses that by chunking things that you're going to touch more of their senses um, like like an online ruler or an online protractor and things like that so when you're introducing something new if you'll break it into smaller chunks and introduce them something new in technology with it and just give them a little bit of hands on so they can explore the new concepts like piece by piece um, and then also when you include digital representations of your new things like images and diagrams and pictures that, that'll help them um, be able to identify similarities differences and things like that and also it's um, if you have the chance the flipped classrooms kind of do this where they get the, let the kids preview things like prior to the start of a lesson you'll give them a video to look at and things like that so that they can preview so take a small chunk of your piece of what you want to teach them let them preview it and then when you can come back and talk to it and then have them um, classify chunks of information and have them decide well where did this little piece of information fit into our lesson that we are talking about um, always we have to adjust what we're going to show them adjust your instruction depending upon your pre-assessment um, and that's going to tell you how big of chunks the kids can have. If they got it, then you can give more in a chunk at a time. If they don't, then you know you have to make your chunks a lot smaller. And you you can know that by you know, your assessments and your polling and your things like that. So just make sure that you don't give them more than what they can handle for when they're ready for. So that was chunking. Over and out. <laughs> Any questions for these two ladies? questions thank you and i like the over and out bit too that that was great there so that was good all right so uh no questions or comments we'll move on to element number 10. quickly can you hear me yes what was the program that you guys were in where you were able to drag and drop the different um pieces to your lesson that's wonders it's our new program for this year our language arts program Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I like the technology part of Wonders. There are some mistakes there in some of the technology uh, where you can put, like you do the graphic organizer and then one part of the graphic organizer you can't type in, but they're trying to fix those things. But it's it's a pretty good program as far as technology goes. Awesome. Like Thank you. Awesome. Katie, you guys ready to go? You and Nicole? All right. I like the enthusiasm. That's great. <laughs> I'll talk. <laughs> All right, Katie, you're going to share your screen and 
Cole's going to talk, I guess. Oh, Chrome, I have to pull it up. <laughs> okay. Okay, our element is number 10, helping students process new information. And um, since all information requires active processing from our students, um, we need to be stimulating that processing by having students summarize and clarify their understanding. And one of the best ways to do this and this, this little slide works perfectly, is to have students work in collaborative groups doing some collaborative processing. And what that is, is that students work to, in groups of three, and after the teacher presents that first chunk, um, one, member of the, one member of the three member group summarizes it and the other two add to the summary. And then if there's some still, conf still some confusion, they, they all voice their confusion and the teacher responds to the class as a whole on their confusion and then they take the chance right then after they've cleared up that information um, on that chunk to make some predictions about next chunk and then the teacher goes ahead and presents this piece of information and the process starts again except for this time another person in the three member group takes care of the summarizing and it just keeps repeating that way until um, everybody gets a chance to do it. Um, I thought that this is a great way to use technology because if they use Google Docs, they all have access then to notes it, it, that were instantaneously taken. They were taken right at, at the time the lecture was taking and they would have been worked on with three different minds going at the same time. So I thought that was a great, a great thing to use technology with the Google, using a Google Doc. And the teacher, and the teacher can keep track of what they're doing as well because she can or he can have access to it. And so the next slide just says, you know, enhancing our technology, using our technology to enhance that collaborative process. Um, the next way, so we're going to go on. See, look at, look at that. Katie did all these slides. She's so amazing. Another way to enhance um, our collaborative processing would be to use polling software and the clickers or your mobile, the kids' mobile devices. In elementary, that's a little more difficult, but in high school, I think this would work really well. Um, in this type of situation, the groups would answer questions before the lesson and submit their answers using the clickers or their mobile devices. And then from that data, the students can summarize and then add to or amend, modify whatever the under, what, what their understanding is of the chunk. Um, okay, we'll go to the next one. The next one, students can use technology in collaborative processing of new information is using screencasts. Um, the software that was suggested is um, Gene and Screen Shop for computers or EduCreations or TouchCats on tablets. Now I have used EduCreate Creations and I really liked it. Um, I think this is a, another really great way for the students to, to use their technology because they can, they can make their own little videos of what they understand and then you can share them and Depending, you, know, you can create a, you as the teacher could create a rubric for the kids to watch screencasts and then they could see, oh, this is what I got from this. And they, the one thing you do have to, to watch with the screencasts and, and these educations, all those types of things so is that whatever, whatever comments anybody's making, you want to, you want to encourage them to make sure that they're they are constructive, that they're not negative. They're not pointing out, oh, well, you looked really bad on there. Or <laughs> you, you know, just you want to make sure that they are doing constructive and that they promote a sense of contribution to the class. Um, then it suggests that you publish their, the screencast tutorials online to your, like your class website, but you always have to check to make sure that that's in compliance with what your district allows, because you can't just, stick it out there and if it's something that they're not they don't allow in your district then you need to make sure you're aware of that um this when you share it on a website on a class website it makes the students a little more motivated to do really high quality work and then you can actually add um you can use cluster maps you can put that's a free thing that you can download and put on and then you can see who and how many people are checking out that screencast so anyway that's that's what we do. Thank you. <laughs> Hold on. Questions or comments for Nicole and Katie? Oh, good. Move on. <laughs> so, 
Thank you, you made a comment about um, clickers, not for elementary. Right. Um, that it may be more suitable for high school. Right. Um, cost of clickers are pretty expensive. And instead of those, there's a, a tool called clickers, paper clickers. Right. And with that you just need, you don't know the teacher needs a device and you just print out paper and the students turn the paper and according to what the answer is and there's a and you need to scan it and it records all the data it's just like a, a clickers but it's a clickers clickers cool clickers yeah clickers not clickers so something to look into um, yeah that's awesome another, how do i get you so you don't see my screen anymore we are always going to see your screen now. It's just it's just it's just us and, and, and your family. So thanks, Katie, for uh, being so open for us. <laughs> you know, if you take your mouse up to to the top of of your screen, a little drop down should come just up to the very top, and just move your cursor up, like right where your Turn camera is. Sign connection. Mute me. Participate. Up, up, up even higher. Just move, move your cursor up all the way on, on the screen. Is to the top it of your screen. Up as it will go? It says in the middle you were you were sharing your screen. So if you hover over that. Oh, uh, stop sharing. There you go. It there popped you. up that time. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Right. Thank you so much, ladies. Well done. Element 11, helping students elaborate on new information. I don't see Kelly or Amber, Amelia. Kaylee or Cindy, are you here? You need the five of you? Please be. How about Tara, helping students record and represent knowledge? I didn't hear from any of them about not being here today. I didn't either. So th th those are linked. We won't show them to you now. We, we may make them present it to us sometime. I so. think the 11 is a, those are slides. It's a slide, uh, yeah. The last, last one's a video. A slide and 12 is a uh, recording. recording. So. so you can go ahead and view those and we'll get those ladies to, to present to us sometime. So that'd be great. Uh, let me share my screen again. I'm really special, but I lost the video and I don't know how to get it back. Do you have the Cisco Hit Meeting Center app open? Hit participants again. Yeah, oh, my heck. I see you guys now. Yep. Okay. okay. Thank you. Sorry. They're all skills we have to learn. It's okay. I just learned how to screen share right before I did mine, so no problem. I clicked, I clicked in. It was like 30 minutes before. before. Yeah, it wasn't right before. <laughs> I was panicked about it. Called Brandon before. So. I, I, I don't answer my phone or respond to emails, apparently. So. <laughs> no. no, it was great. Thank you. Thank you for doing that, um, those presentations. This week, as far as your assignments, um, Chapter three in the text, the, um, the next slide, we'll talk about that briefly. Your discussion post. I enjoy reading your discussion post. I think it's there. It's great. The, the conversations back and forth. Um, th this week, the topic is drill and practice, or some people call it drill and kill, um, the software that you can do that with. And I'll let you read more into what's required for that and the articles there for you to read if you need to. Um, please remember to respond to at least two additional posts. Um, thank you for your original post. It's a few who aren't responding to two people. So make sure that you do that so we can give you credit for the class. Um, again, it's pass fail course. You do all the required assignments and that is part of the required assignments. Your um, assignment you will submit to us is you will create a philosophy. Um, looking at the impl implications of technology integration within your teaching philosophy. There is a link on the on that um, page in Canvas where it takes you out to a philosophy survey if you want to use that to kind of help pinpoint your feelings and thoughts about different aspects of education and then it gives some different um, titles or um, 
areas of where where your philosophy is going to go. So um, for assignments, that's it. Shouldn't be too deathly painful. Hopefully not. For the the reading, um, if you look back last week and the week before at uh, Mandy's and Sonia's and Janet's presentations, they they covered um, elements four and five, and that's what this chapter is. So you can go back and review those if you need to read the text with some questions to think about um, looking at technology to um, establish and maintain rules and why is it important for students to create representations of these and um, and why planning organizing um, intentional learning centers in your classroom is important for your class and um, have some shameless plugs Clint and I um, this weekend you should all head to St. George. It's going to be great in St. George, not just because of the weather, but because there's Ed Camp St. George going on on Saturday, and your keynote speaker will be Clint. And Clint is is excitedly waiting for this opportunity. Um, I'm looking forward to it. It'll be good. It'll be good. If you're not aware what Ed Camp is, it is a a conference unlike other conferences. You uh unconference. Unconference. Th thank you. So un it's an unconference. Uh, there's no set schedule or, or it's a set time schedule. There's no set agenda. You show up and you get sticky notes and you write down what you want to discuss during the conference or some ideas that you have and then that's compiled. And things then you want to share, things you want to learn. Yep. And then sessions are created from, from that. So it's based on the attendees, what's important to them at, at the moment. And it's free. And it's free. That's the best part. It's free. It's free. They do it. In, they, it's been done in Salt Lake area um, quite a, for the last couple of years. And Three, four years. the first time St. George Clint has been in St. George before. This is it. Like inaugural, the first, the inaugural. Camp St. George. So um, there, th this is a live link. So if you uh, on the this slide, so it's been embedded already into Canvas. Click on that link, take it to a web page, give you more information about it, details and location and whatnot. And, and so, remember that um, you are. One of the credit requirements for the endorsement is to attend one of these conferences. Not one of these three, but over the course of the two years, yeah, you need to go to a, a conference. So, and that one's only a day. Yep, if, day if you're on looking conference. for value, get it, get in, get it done. That one's a day. <laughs> um, a a two-day conference is the USAC conference held up at the uh, U of U, March 22nd and 23rd. Uh, this is technology-based conference. Um, it's talking to one of the uh, district technology directors, and he said he loves teachers going to USEC, and in the same token, he hates it because they come back with all these programs and ideas that they want to implement and have to yeah. look at new technologies, new tools, and new things to put into the district. So it, it's there's a you come back with a lot from USEC conference, and there's some great keynote speakers, Manus, Manus. Zomorodi, she is a, um, a podcaster. John Coach, he is the vice. She's got a book coming out too. Oh, I, I didn't realize that. Yeah, she's got a book that's coming out pretty soon. Oh, cool. And John, um, he is the, I believe, vice president of education at Apple. He's one of Apple's early employees. He's been He's there, been there the since time. the dawn of time with Apple. So it, I don't know how they managed to get. <laughs> him there, but it's pretty cool. So I'm excited yeah. for that. So, uh, and on USET, if you guys go, I'm in charge of volunteers. So if you're willing to spend one of your sessions helping me out and helping out some of the vendors or helping out with food or helping move people around or whatever, I'd love to have you uh, do that. I'll share the volunteer sign up uh, stuff as soon as I get my act together and get that ready <laughs> to go. So um, if you're going, I'd love to have you guys. You get a free t shirt, free little gift. So Love to have your help great. with that. I, I wear mine proudly from last year, yep. so it's good times. And then the, the last plug is the URSA conference, the Utah Rural Schools Conference. This is the not even printed yet poster, which you see for the first time right here. This is in July. It's a three-day conference um, in July and down at in Cedar City. This isn't necessarily a technology conference, but it is an education conference. So it's not just technology-based. It's a conference for ed edu educators, so plan on that. Um, we, as Clint and I and the other service center trainers have been tasked with um, getting presenters for the conference. We would like to ask if any of you would be interested in presenting any um, 
greatly encourage you to yeah. to share what you're doing. Yeah, not in technology, not sort of technology, but any practices that you're doing in your class, anything that's working, programs that, that you come across, um, like wonders program, anything like that, that you want to share with, with others that may benefit others around the state. Um, it's a good conference. There's 400 plus people attend this one um, each year, and it's a uh, it's a good conference. So great these yep. are live links. You can click on these in the presentation and get to the website with more information with that. So uh, um, any questions from anybody about what's required this week? Um, anything yeah, we can answer I for you? I do have a question. When the, I, I've only read half of the reading and you're talking about procedures, right? Teaching procedures for some of that? Yeah, yes, all the procedures. Yeah. Okay. All right. I just, uh, do you want that on a Prezi? Do you want that on, or can we just write that up? You're, you're, you're um, all you need to submit to us is your philosophy. Oh, so that's we, we don't need anything about your, your procedure. However so you want to do it. That's part of your, philosophy. yeah. Any way you want to do it. Prezi, yeah. you could type it up. You could make a Adobe Spark video or post with it. Anything that way. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're pretty flexible on that have one. To be, I don't have. I don't necessarily have to video myself. I could type it up. Nope. Okay. All right. But I do want. Yes, to you don't necessarily have to video yourself. Yeah. Okay. But I do want to share something with you. I don't know if you can see this. This is one of my students. We had we had somebody hack in a while back, and so they told us to make sure that we have the students log out. So I've been saying log out, log out, log out. Plug it in. Plug it in. Plug it in. So plug he made me a poster. Can, I don't know if you can see it. That's cute. He's got a little click button here on the log out and a little plug in thing here, and then it's me saying it three times. Every That's funny. Time. And, and now they're just and now they're saying it, and I don't have to. But we still have about three that don't that don't log out. So, <laughs> but anyway, um, the procedures work. <laughs> they, they get stuck in their heads. <laughs> All right, thank you. That's good. Thank you. So if no other questions, any other questions people have? Rachel has one. Brandon, I had a question about you were going to check into whether they're going to offer that elementary en engagement with Canvas during oh. the summer. Yeah, I was going to look in. I, I will. Yes, I am going to do that. It's already full. And then the other one with a wait list and then the one that you go in, that's the flex one where you go in the one day or whatever. Uh -huh. I can't go that, you know, stuff and everything. So we that's like one of the only classes we need left. Do you want and me to teach that one? And where we're, we're well in to fulfill that section, because the rest of them are all Canvas stuff, but we're elementary, and so we need the elementary engagement one with the Canvas, or it would be more beneficial for us, I guess. But if yes. they're not going to offer it during the summer, that's it. What else do you recommend we take to fulfill that? I don't have my summer schedule plan yet, so that's one that I could possibly do. Oh, because that would be great. We could do that one during that, the summer because so. it's it was already full. It was with a waiting list to get in for already this semester. So okay, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll contact you again and see if that's one that I could possibly do for you guys. Yeah, well, Rachel and I would be interested in that. There's probably quite a few of us. No, there. yeah, I, I know there have been others who who need something in that. Yeah, Brent and I need to coordinate what we're gonna offer okay. this summer too. So. So if that would be, yeah. maybe get that one in there. Yeah, any suggestions you guys have? That'd be cool. Just email that them to us. Probably let us know. Us yeah, yeah, we'll look into that for sure. Thank you for that suggestion. Anything else from anybody? Sounds great. Thank you. Appreciate it. Enjoy your week. Um, see you in St. George this weekend, right, everyone? Or Ed, Ed Camp, St. George? And, uh, all right. Sounds good. Well, thank you. We'll see everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys.